Well, good morning, good people and Eagle fans. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods here. I am back here at the Joe Boo Sports Man Cave getting ready to get it on against the Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia has replaced the left hands up, the Washington Commanders, as our biggest rivals. The Dallas Cowboys, well, you know, it used to be the Washington Commanders back then when they were the Redskins and the Cowboys fighting it out for the chance to go to playoffs and Super Bowls and things like that. The Eagles were like Mary's Little Lambs. They were just kind of like, mm, mm, they weren't that good. But through the course of the 2000s, the Eagles have become a great team. And let me not sugarcoat it. I'm going to be like the law. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They're a great team. We got to show up and we got to kick their teeth in. And if you are a fan of football, you have to remember the history of the Cowboys and the hatred that started with Buddy Ryan and the body bag game and things, you know, with the Eagles literally cheering Michael Irvin breaking his freaking neck on the field. The Eagle fans that used to throw batteries at the, the opposing players, the jail cells that were in the bottom of the old vet stadium. Now, FYI, a lot of people don't know this, but believe it or not, there's actually some holding cells at the basement of AT&T. The only difference is they actually have TV. So you can be a drunk fool and act up, but you get to go and still watch the game while you're waiting for the popo to get there to take you to the real jail. Just saying, you know, the Cowboys have a bit of class. We'll be here live streaming starting 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with the game in Germany, following through the 1 o'clock games right into the Dallas Cowboys versus the Eagles. And I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. In my mind, in my opinion, what the Cowboys have to do to get a win. When you look at this game, you, you already know that Jalen Hurts is hurting. Jalen Hurts is, you know, some people think that he actually hurt his knee the first week of the season. Some people think it was four weeks ago. We don't really know exactly what happened. And I talked to my buddy Philly 500 last night because I'm mystified how it is. And he is too. This is, and this is not just me being a Dallas Cowboy YouTuber that hates the Eagles. He's questioning the Eagles himself about why he is not on the, the injury report and the great mystery behind it. Didn't the Atlanta Falcons get in trouble for not listing somebody having a cold on the injury report? Am I wrong on that? But it seems like the Eagles have been getting away with a lot of stuff and a lot of bad calls that have been going their way. I don't know if this is the NFL conspiracy or whatever, but the Cowboys have to be prepared to face the fans the officials, and a great Philadelphia Eagle team. And if you listen to most people, the Cowboys got no chance in hell. But I'm here to say, I don't necessarily believe that. The Eagles still need to show me. I know they're 7-1, and one, and shout out to you because you've beat all the teams in front of you. We screwed the pooch with the Cardinals. If we had beat the Cardinals, you, you would probably forgive maybe the 49er game. But it's still, the, the Cardinals, it's kind of like you've, you've eaten some popcorn. You know, you enjoyed the popcorn. I don't know if you like it with just salt and butter or, or if you like hot sauce on it or, or if you like caramel corn. It doesn't matter what kind of popcorn it is. But you know how you get that little part of that kernel and it just slides between your teeth yeah, and your gum and it just keeps gnawing at you and you can't, you try to get a toothpick and you can't get it out and it just, just bugs the hell out of you. That's the Arizona Cardinal game. It's a kernel of corn that's stuck in there because, you know, quite frankly, we were probably looking past the 49er game and the loss of three offensive linemen and losing digs. You know, it was one of those things. I, you know, that's that's going to be my take on it. You know, the Eagles, of course, will always beat us down because you lost to a one in 17. Yeah, you know, that happens. I remember the Dallas Cowboys being ass ass and winning one game, one game. 
without their number one draft pick, Troy Aikman, against the Washington Redskins, now, of course, the Washington Commanders. And that team went on to the playoffs that we beat. That happens. It's football. Get over it. And in football, it doesn't really matter how you start. It's really how you finish. I've seen a giant team that was ass-ass, that was just barely getting by, making it as a wild card, come, unfortunately, to my house, kick our teeth in on the way to beating an undefeated New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. That's football, guys. That's football. That Cardinal game was so long ago. It's like it was last year. Right now, you got a two-game win streak, and you hope to push it to three. Now, the Eagles, again, Jalen Hurts is not running like he did last year, but he has had Swift, who's played incredible running, and that's one of the problems we've had, is stopping the run. And then there's A.J. Brown. The Titans ought to be sued for malpractice for letting that guy go. He is, as much as I hate to say it, one of the most dynamic receivers in football. And the connection that he has with Jalen Hurts seems like that guy is always over, always open, and very, very physical at getting the ball. That's going to be the key. I don't know that you can stop a guy who's had six games straight of 125 yards. What you hope to do is contain him. I feel like this may end up being a bit of a shootout, although... The Cowboys can put pressure on the Eagles like nobody else they face, other than maybe the Jets, a team that did beat them. The advantage the Cowboys have over the Jets is the Cowboys have a quarterback. That's going to be the difference. Because as we look at this, this is kind of crazy. Let's take a look at the statistics here. Because you look at the defense, the defense, okay? When you start talking about rushing yards, okay? We're going to go on here. You know, you see up here, the worst one against the rush is the Denver Broncos, giving up 1,233 yards already. But you go all the way down to the Eagles. The Eagles' defense is number freaking one at stopping the run. 524 yards is all they've given up. 3.8 yards average. Now, that's not the lowest yardage per average. That is the lowest amount of yards a team has made. Now, if we go to the lowest yards per average, you know, we're looking at the Bears are the best at 3.3. They are 3.8. But still, right now with Tony Pollard, with the teams we face, He's only averaging 3.9. So you don't look and say, we're going to make a whole lot of hay on that defense running the football. <clears throat> Jalen Carter is the real deal. It's the real deal. Jordan Davis, a guy that I did want, he is plugging up the hole like a big turd in the toilet, okay? That sucker is clogged. Ain't nothing going down. But... The problem for the Eagles is, here's the problem. Problem for the Eagles is, they're secondary. Take a look at this. Believe it or not, their secondary is ass-ass. They've given up 16 touchdown passes. This, I'm sorry, they're, they're tied there with the Denver Broncos. 16 touchdown passes. 16. 16. That's two a game. You only have the commanders with the left hand up and the Chicago Bears with more. Interception wise, hmm. You got to go way down. You, know, you, you got to, let's see, let's see, where's the Cowboys? The Cowboys have nine in the fifth spot. Interceptions. The Eagles are down here at four, where everybody's kind of tied. Only the Titans have. Less interceptions than the Eagles. They don't get the football. Okay? So we, they, they give up touchdown passes. They don't get interceptions. They stop the run. And when we talk about yard average that they're giving up, look at this. Where are they? 
yard average. Da, 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 I'm messing up here. Eagles are giving up 5.8 yards per pass play. That's not good. It's not great. It's not awful, but it's not good. So when you look at the numbers of this game, when you look at the numbers of this game, running the football, something we haven't been great at, we've gotten good numbers because we run the football so often, you got to look at this that you've got to release Dak Prescott. You have to let him go because Dak Prescott has feasted against the Eagles. There's no fear there. There is hay to be made. And now you've got CeeDee Lamb, who early in the season we had kind of the, you know, the pouting that, you know, I want the football. He just wasn't like Des Bryant or Michael Irvin and say, get me the damn ball. He was more of, okay, I'll wait my turn. But him and Dak, since him and Dak had that conversation, the Cowboys offense has evolved from trying to be the ground and pound to now throwing the ball downfield with last week really throwing the ball down the field. And that's where the Cowboys are going to have to go ahead and make some hay. This may end up being a high-scoring game, but I look at this and I say that the Cowboys are fired up about this because this game is a major opportunity for the Dallas Cowboys. And if the Cowboys want to win this division, which I think they really need because the difference of winning this division can be being the number one or number two seed or being the fifth seed at best. And we don't want a situation like last year, we went to Tampa Bay on a Monday night and then had to go to San Francisco on a short week. Two back-to-back road games in a short week preparing for your nemesis. We want the home field advantage. This game is huge. And you're hearing the players. They're talking a little bit, but they're not putting up the bulletin board material. And I know that most of you don't know what a bulletin board is. It's like a whiteboard is now, okay? Bulletin board was, back in the day in the locker rooms, it was literally, you had things called thumbtacks that you actually tacked and put a piece of paper. You cut out a piece out the newspaper where somebody said something, and you stuck it on there. It didn't go to your tablet. It didn't go to the big street TV. It went to the bulletin board. But guys like Dallas Goddard, I'm a Philly guy, and I love the hatred we have towards Dallas. So hearing Dallas sucks just gets me fired up because I feel the same way about them. You've heard, I think, Jalen Carter saying he's ready to kill the Cowboys. You've heard D-Law, you know, basically said, you know, uh, I'm misunderstood. I'll smack the shit out of all of you. You got Micah Parsons going close to home, wanting to show off. And hearing, of course, that Lane Johnson is his daddy. There's a million storylines in here. We've got Philly 500, who has literally all off-season All season so far, text messaged me video after video after video telling me how great the Eagles are. That they've got the best defense in the world. They've got the the MVP quarterback. They're going to go, you know, 17 and 0 on to 20 and 0. They're going to be the greatest team of all time. And the Cowboys, they suck, you know, and everything else. They've even now tried to convince us that the 8-3 and three record that Dak Prescott has against him doesn't mean anything. That 3rd and 30, 3rd and 30, last year, 3rd down and 30, completions going through and kicking that ass coming from behind meant nothing. They tried to tell you that Dak Prescott averaging 44 points a game the last three times means nothing. That's what they're trying to get. Oh, well, it does it doesn't mean nothing that you own our ass because you don't do anything in the playoffs. You're moving the field goal post. Right now we talk about this game. And this game is for all the marbles. Let's hear what the crew I, I'm curious. Get up. You know they hate the Cowboys. You know they're always going to shade it against us. They're always going to nitpick and cherry pick 
a statistic to try and tell you that the Cowboys suck or Dak Prescott is the worst quarterback in the NFL, that guys like Justin Herbert are better, even though Justin Herbert and his team have a losing record, that he can't seem to elevate a great roster to actually be a winner and actually beat the sorry-ass Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? They'll try and tell you that the other quarterbacks out there, the new hotties, the, the Kyler Murrays and stuff, and the Jordan Loves and, and the Justin Fields, that these guys are better. And somehow, these guys keep falling to the wayside, and Dak Prescott is still there. We need Daddy Dak, that's the daddy of the Eagles, to definitely show up tomorrow and show off. And one more, the big one in Philadelphia. Can Dak beat the Eagles? Absolutely he can. Dak Prescott has owned the NFC East since 2017. He's 25-4 and four in the division with 57 total touchdowns to 17 interceptions. This guy is a flat-out baller. And here's the deal. Baller. He allowed the 25th ranked opponent QBR and have the third most touchdowns for the second fewest interceptions. So this could be a big Dak Prescott game in the link on Sunday. So, And you see the numbers. Here they are. Again, to your point, against the Eagles, he's been particularly good. There's been this talk about Dak not playing well against the good teams. It's really San Francisco. He has struggled against the Niners. They have had his number. You look at his numbers against Philadelphia. They've been extraordinarily good. And so here I thought, Cindy, put the picks on the screen. I thought I was going way out. I thought I was going to shock <laughs> everybody by taking Dallas. Graziano, mm -hmm. when I saw that next to your name, it really surprised me. Why do you like the Cowboys in this game? Really hard game to pick, obviously, and it, it's tough to pick against the Eagles any time. But right now, I think the Cowboys are playing at a very high level. I think their passing game is operating at a very high level, and the Eagles' secondary is vulnerable at the moment. Jalen Hurts, as tremendous as he is, as much as I believe in him, big picture, he's got a, he's a little banged up. He's playing with it with an injured knee, and, and it is not, it's not keeping them from winning, and it's not keeping him from playing really well, but I think if you're talking about tiebreaker stuff in a close matchup, that's the kind of stuff I looked at, and, and I thought, look, I, I, the Cowboys went into the season saying they wanted to run the ball. They haven't done that well. If they try and do it Sunday, they're probably in big trouble, <laughs> and I think they know that. And I think the way that Dak is playing right now and his history against the Eagles means they could have a big game in the passing. Game. Yeah, there quite literally isn't a path to victory for the Dallas Cowboys that doesn't involve Dak Prescott playing at a really high level yeah. and outplaying Jalen Hurts. So that's something that we absolutely have to see happen. Mm -hmm. And the Eagles are suspect in the back end. Their secondary <laughs> yeah. is, a, is a work in progress. That's why a couple of weeks ago they went out and traded for an all-pro safety in Kevin Byard. So this is an opportunity for Dak and the Dallas Cowboys to make a statement about who they are and being real content in the NFC if it doesn't happen now with Dak and the Cowboys yeah. when is it going to happen this is the time they've got to have more urgency quite frankly than the Philadelphia Eagles when it comes to winning this game on Sunday because they clearly have more to prove as I come to Bart I'd like to ask Cindy our director permission can you change mine to Eagles I'm gonna make an admission right now <laughs> the reason I picked Dallas is because I had four analysts on my set yesterday, and everybody picked the Eagles. I had four <laughs> Eagles on my screen. Come on was, over to the green side, I was side, positive Grady. that was going to happen again today. So nah. I said, I'll take Dallas. If everyone thinks one thing is going to happen, then I have to go the other way. Yeah. Now that I see all you guys like Dallas, I'm going to back to what my head <laughs> said for you. Is, yeah. I think the Eagles are going to win the game. I, mean, I think the, the Eagles are the, the more complete team now. They haven't been playing as well um, as late, and they've won ugly, but they've won. And, you know, the matchup to watch is how does A.J. Brown continue to dominate the, uh, you know, the airways, right? And can C.D. Lamb, you know, find ways to get open? Now, the problem with Philadelphia is they really struggle and they don't have a slot, uh, a nickel. And C.D. Lamb spends most of his time at the nickel. So, but last week, Bradbury was put in the slot and he struggled. I wonder do they match up big play slay and take that away and make, make Dak go somewhere else. And it always comes down to can Dak take care of the football? And, and decision making in tough periods. I trust Jalen Hurts more in pivotal moments to make decisions sure. in tight games than I do Dak Prescott because of his recent history. Well, listen, mm -hmm. the Cowboys, I, I was disappointed of course he didn't he does. do anything at the trade deadline. I know I'm always Sorry. looking for the big deal, mm -hmm. but, but I really wanted them to go after Derrick Henry. I thought that would make all the sense yeah. in the world. I don't know if the Titans were going to be willing to trade mm -hmm. him or not. My understanding is some teams called the Cowboys were not one of them. That's what we've had reported here. 
I, I believe the Cowboys, ultimately their downfall is that I don't think they can run the ball right. the way they want to run the ball. You cannot run these small, finesse backs uh, 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 with the power game, which is the way they want to do it. They miss Ezekiel Elliott on that level, and I think that they really missed in not going after a power back. Well, absolutely, and that's why they've struggled in the red zone the way they have, right? right. Short yardage, goal line is when you need a thumper, a guy that can be a hammer for your offense the level of physicality that allows you to match the way the Philadelphia Eagles play. But in looking at the Dallas Cowboys, like one of the things that we have to be concerned with is their ability to be able to capitalize mm -hmm. on the mistakes that the Eagles have shown themselves to inevitably yep. make. They've got a lot of turnovers on the season, that being the Philadelphia Eagles offense. 13 on the season, 13. but it's only equated to only 21 points for opponents. The Dallas Cowboys have got to find a way to cash in because the Eagles' offense, even though they've turned it over, the defense has only allowed one touchdown off of said turnover. So to me, that's going to be a sneaky big part of this game. Sudden change offense for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, and I think to your point about the run game, even if they had a power back, no one's running on the Eagles. Power, finesse, not. I mean, they literally the toughest run defense in the yeah. league yeah. in terms of you know yards allowed per game. So uh, I, I think this plays into the hands of, of Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb and the passing game, and I think if that's the case, <laughs> they are, right, we'll see. The more you, the more you <laughs> They're playing at a throw. very high level right now. They're coming off an outstanding game. He has a tremendous amount of confidence in the way he's playing right now, Ta Dak I'm talking about, and he has a tremendous amount of confidence against this team. His record against them is very good. We haven't seen him match up with Jalen Hurts on the other side, right. and I think that has something to do with the win-loss record, but it doesn't have anything to do with the, the yards and the points he's put up against the Eagles. I think he's, you know, I, I think he's in a good place. Sneaky, Dallas is 30th in defending the tight end. This should be a big game for Dallas Goddard. Okay. Very nice for me as I make my DraftKings selections this week. <laughs> All right, good people. That's what we have right now. The latest on the Cowboys. The Cowboys are going into this game healthy. Expect that Tyron Smith will go through the walkthrough today as the Cowboys travel to Philadelphia to take on the cheesesteaks. The Eagles are beat down. One little note here. Now, I know you, people will poo-poo it and say, well, the Cowboys offense didn't do all of it. But the bottom line is, right now, you've got the Miami Dolphins scoring 33.9 points a game, which is skewed because of that game they played against Denver where they scored 70. Dallas is number two in scoring, 28.1. Philly right behind at 28. And when you look at what the Cowboys' defense has been able to do versus what the Eagles, I think the Cowboys have a really good chance. It's always hard to play in Philadelphia. It's always hard to play on the road. But Dak Prescott and the Cowboys, they won't be scared. And I'm going to end here because the difference maker for the game might be Kenneth Gainwell. He slid and he went head first at him. That's a penalty. Why do they call a penalty? First of 10. Gainwell's still on the field. Motherfucker. That should be a pen that should be a personal foul. Mother humping bullshit. First of 10 at the 42. Hurts. Back to pass. Looking, looking, throws. He gets hit as he throws. Intercepted. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because guess who's on the field? Guess who's on the field? Kenneth fucking Gainwell. Kenneth Gainwell sucks. I, it's Gainwell's fault. It's all Gainwell's fault. Get him off the field. Fucking Gainwell. Get his ass off the field so we can score some points. Every 